Okay. Hi, everybody. Again, thank you very much, Dr. Chakra, for the invite. So as you can see from the title of my presentation, uh, it is a hard and heavy topic. I'll try my best to make it lighter and actually interesting. So the title say commonly misdiagnosis. Yes, it is a misnomer. This, ent this group of disease is not common. But if you deal with one of them and there is a high chance it can be missed. So that's why I titled it, titled it like that. I have no financial disclosures or conflict of interest. Uh, one disclosure is I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a geneticist. So you have to accept that. White matter diseases, as we all know, has nonspecific overlapping patterns of features on MRI. And here I am presenting four cases of leukodystrophy with an exception that Cadacil, which we will discuss, is not a true leukodystrophy, but these uh, entities are lumped together under leukodystrophy, as we will discuss. So they can result in misdiagnosis as MS, which happens to be about 20 to 40 percent of cases diagnosed as MS. And if you play with the words, then there is another word which we would say misdiagnosis. So if it happens to be adult onset leukodystrophy, it can be a misdiagnosis if we diagnose as MS, which happens to be about 2 to 4 percent, a small percentage, but we have to keep these uh, lesions in mind. So moving on, first thing first, what exactly is leukodystrophy? In the strict definition sense, it is a genetically determined entity of white matter diseases, which is uh, categorized into two broad categories, hypomyelinating versus demyelinating. And hypomyelinating, as we will see in the next slide, that it is uh, uncommon compared to the demyelinating, which are more common and the dominant entity. And in this disease, there is pri primary glial and myelin sheath pathology and can affect any patient age group. Of course, you know, it mostly afflicts the infants and children, but why we are discussing it, that's the reason that it can affect the adults and it can cause problem of diagnosis. And genetic testing is being developed and is taken to another level. And that's why, uh, that is one of the reasons I'm discussing this, that if you have a case, there's a high chance of diagnosing these cases with better genetic testing. So the definition of leukodystrophy is generally diluted. Uh, leukodystrophy, as I uh, defined to you before, but neurometabolic disorders, genetic vascular Colopathies, which is a laundry list now, mitochondrial disorder, and even primary neuronal developmental disorders lump under leukodystrophy. So first, let something uh, get off the bat, which is the first category of uh, adult hypomyelinating dystrophy, which present, which typically present the spastic ataxia, and it is actually less common. But one thing you should remember, and the pediatric neurologist is well aware of it, that if you have a white matter disease, as you can see, bilateral confluent uh, T2 hyperintensity even on flare, but the T1 images would look normal. That is rather characteristic and pathognomonic of hypomyelinating disorders. And we should keep that in mind on MRI. Uh, the four hypomyelinating leukodystrophies which you may see in your adult practice is the uh, poster boy of hypomyelinating disease called Bell these Merzbacher and myelination with atrophy of basal ganglia and cerebellum and uh, relatively new entity POL3 related disorders. So these are the ones which can happen in adults, but our focus is going to be mainly on demyelinating diseases. But before that, let's have an overview of adult onset leukodystrophies. There is about 20 well-established and distinct adult onset leukodystrophy is now described. Of course, they can happen in younger uh, general uh, population as uh, more commonly. So overall, we all agree that it's a rare entity, but it's being increasingly recognized. Well, we have to grow, we have to learn. So we, that should not stop us discussing these entities. And now with new genetic testing, we probably are going to uh, learn more about them. We have to discover more of these entities. So it's 
not a bad idea to discuss and learn these entities. Hypomyelinating leukodystrophies are even rare compared to demyelinating disorders. Uh, diagnosis is a challenge superimposed by phenotypic variations. Conventional diagnosis, well, with the arrival of next generation sequencing, success has been boosted up to 70 to even 80 percent. When do we do biopsy? Well, uh, generally it's not needed, but if you suspecting a treatable condition and you cannot diagnose and family reasons or counseling or the patient is rapidly deteriorating, so in this condition you may resort to biopsy. So let's uh, touch upon clinical and imaging hints and highlights. The expert neurologists in this field say that if the patient in adult population present with spastic paresis, dementia, family history also suggestive, and with neuropsychiatric symptoms, do consider adult leukodystrophy. Of course, there are other symptomatology, but what is more important is to be detective and look for extra cerebral or extra neurologic manifestation. As you can see, it's a laundry list. For example, the most common adult leukodystrophy is adrenal leukodystrophy. They can have adrenal insufficiency, even xanthomas in cerebral tendonosanthomatosis, peripheral neuropathy, optic atrophy, migraine, cataract, GI symptom, etc. So this can be really helpful uh, from clinical standpoint. Uh, before discussing MR feature of individual leukodystrophies, let's go back and revisit the typical MR features of MS. You can see the Dawson fingers I showed before the recent talk, then anterior periventricular temporal lobe changes, the typical pons, middle uh, cerebral peduncle changes, and uh, brainstem, uh, sorry, spinal cord patchy changes. So this is typical stigmata of MS. But the question is when it does not fit into MS, so we have to think about leukodystrophy. But on the contrary, as I showed in the beginning slide, they may very well fit into MS. They may be misdiagnosed as MS. So the imaging hints and highlights, and this would be the recurrent theme in our talk, uh, confluent uh, and symmetric signal changes. So we, we, I will uh, repeat these two uh, terms again and again when we are describing leukodystrophies. But on the other hand, there can be patchy changes that will make you think of actually small vessel uh, genetic diseases, and we will discuss those. So here we have bilateral symmetric confluent white matter signal change, but here we have patchy change, which is cadacil, and this is one of the canonical leukodystrophies. Distribution is also important in individual leukodystrophies. Uh, particular adrenal leukodystrophy, Alexander disease, and some of the uh, lysosomal disorders, as we will discuss. Then enhancement actually typically not present in this disorder unless they present with acute bouts of attacks, uh, Alexander leukodystrophy, etc. But what is important from imaging point of view is look for specific features on MRI, for example, restricted diffusion, calcification, cystic chain. And this is going to be our index case or poster child, or I would say this is the case which drove me to uh, go for this presentation and present you, uh, 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 present you my uh, discussion on adrenal, uh, sorry, adult onset leukodystrophy. So this is the case which we struggle to diagnose. And last but not the least, these diseases have progressive course with few exceptions. So the way I will do this is I will present you uh, adreno, uh, uh, some pics of adult leukodystrophies. I will pick these cases and the first one I'm going to pick is the one in which it took us nine months to diagnose after even two biopsies. So it can be a really, really challenging cases. So this is a 30 year old with progressive cognitive dysfunction and there was no toxin metabolic or RSS identified. The workup was negative, but what is characteristic and peculiar in this case is there is bilateral diffuse white matter changes, but there is persistent restricted diffusion even on the follow-up. And of course there is progression. All these are diffusion images with ADC map, except there is a flare. even brainstem is involved. 
And you would agree with me that initially it looks more patchy, but over time it becomes confident and almost symmetric. Distribution is non-specific, periventricular, but the specific feature was diffusion, hyperintense signal, and there was corpus callosum involvement as well. What is the diagnosis? Well, I'll tell you the diagnosis, but this is another case from the literature, companion case, almost same features. Uh, let me tell you about this entity. It, it is very specific to adult population. Mean age is around 40, progressive cognitive uh, dysfunction, spasticity, gait disturbance, even Parkinsonism happens, sphincter disturbance. And it can be confused with frontotemporal dementia and periventricular white matter changes with restricted diffusion can be the hallmark if present. And brain biopsy can be avoided, although we couldn't. And unfortunately, there is no treatment. So the disease I'm talking about is heredity leukodystrophy with spheroids, with a lot of other acronyms. And there is a specific gene identified already, the colony stimulating factor receptor mutation. And this pathologist will tell us that these are the spheroid bodies. There is a case from literature almost similar, but note the persistent restricted diffusion and even with calcification. So the next pick, a le uh, adult leukodystrophy I have for you is they can present in adults in a two sets of presentation. Uh, this patient A present with neuropsychiatric disorder, dementia, and ataxia, while the group uh, patient B presents with spastic periparesis, sensory disturbance, and bladder and sexual dysfunction. And this is the uh, patient A population, and they present with, oh, this is one patient, this is another patient. Conference symmetric prior to occipital white matter changes with enhancement, as you can see the rim enhancement along the white matter changes, and characteristically prior to occipital with corpus callosum involvement. The diagnosis in this case is cerebral adrenoleukodystrophy. Uh, is this the most common phenotype? No. Actually, the uh, patient B set of uh, symptomatology actually is the most common in adults. And you can notice that there is a corticospinal tract involvement. And in the longstanding case, there is diffuse spinal cord atrophy. And this is the adrenomyeloneuropathy, which is called the progressive myelopathic variant of adrenoleukodystrophy. And that's what we should remember in adults. So let's talk about adrenal leukodystrophy. And it is actually the most common adult leukodystrophy, about 14 million. Of course, it is rare, but the common among adult leukodystrophy. And there is a specific gene uh, identified. And important to remember, they, they have accumulation of very long chain fatty acid depositing in CNS and other renal glands and testes. Adrenomyeloneuropathy is actually the predominant phenotype in adult males, but it is the adult cerebral uh, variant which uh, ensues on top of AMN, and that is can be really severe and fatal. And there has been trials in which stem cell therapy has shown to halt cerebral inflammation, like in this case we see there is bilateral frontal and parietal occipital diffuse enhancing edge uh, along the demyelinating process. So stem cell therapy may help. Uh, what are the key imaging features? We already uh, saw most of them. So corticospinal tract and spinal cord involvement with atrophy as see, should be expected in adrenomyeloneuropathy. And then paratoxipital distribution in the cerebral form. But in adult patients, they are uh, overall, there can be uh, frontal lobe involvement as well. And you can imagine uh, that they have neuropsychiatric uh, disturbance. As you can see by frontal confluent white matter T2 hyperintensity, and let's not forget that there can be brainstem and uh, cerebellum involvement, particularly adrenomyeloneuropathy. So the third pick is presenting with early onset dementia, schizophrenia, spasticity, ataxia, optic atrophy, and you can claim the diagnosis. I'm sure our pediatric neurologists sitting in the audience are picking all these uh, unknown leukodystrophies. So here we go. The same uh, recurrent theme, confluent symmetric white matter signal change 
distribution is periventricular dominant. Eventually, it becomes diffuse. And as you can see here, there is corpus callosum involvement. And uh, this axial T2 image, there is this striation. That is the specific feature in this entity, which we call tigroid pattern, but it can be seen in per, uh, the hypomyelinating disorder, the uh, pearl disease, Merzbecker, as well as uh, Krebs disease. And this uh, patient with acute attacks can have diffusion hyper intense signal changes as well. So the diagnosis and the leukodystrophy I was, was adult metachromatic leukodystrophy, and it is also relatively common. And about 20% of MLD present in adults, even described up to seven decades. And as I showed you, they can have restricted diffusion, tigroid appearance here, autosomal recessive, lysosomal disorder, and um, they can present with neuropsychiatric disturbance. They have a sulfatide accumulation and affect periventricular white matters. And also when periventricular white matter is involved, uh, most of the time there's corpus callosum involvement and they can uh, expectedly have a uh, spastic uh, uh, spasticity. So frontal dominance in adults can tigroid appearance, we already talked about therapeutic treatment and there has been self trials although in adults, the disease can be self-limiting. Number four, adult leukodystrophy. Patient uh, present with attacks triggered by physiologic stress like trauma and infection. They have spasticity, cerebellar ataxia, and psychiatric symptoms. And again, confluence, symmetric, white matter signal change, diffuse distribution, right? So probably not hard to claim this diagnosis until I tell you that there are some specific features that there is rear faction or cystic degeneration of the white matter. And we're talking about vanishing white matter disease. It is quite rare, but uh, quite characteristic appearance on MRI. As you can see, diffuse white matter changes with periventricular uh, cystic changes or cavitation. And this is secondary to uh, translation initiation factor mutation, autosomal recessive, and triggered by trauma or infection with significant progression over decades. As you can see, diffuse white matter involvement and look for the cystic change or cavitation. Again, no specific treatment, but can be uh, mild in adults. Uh, adult leukodystrophy number five. So here the presentation is, now it's pyramidal dysfunction with spasticity, almost similar to the others, cognitive decline, cortical blindness and optic neuropathy, and that can clinch the diagnosis, and also peripheral neuropathy. So again, confluent and symmetric signal change with corpus callosum involvement, and then corticospinal tract involvement we see here, almost similar to the one we saw in adrenomyeloneuropathy, and distribution is nonspecific, and the special features is corticospinal tract in this leukodystrophy. This is adult onset Krebs disease called globite cell leukodystrophy, about 10 in million. And the key feature is actually about 10% can happen in adults. So up even described up to fifth decade, and lysosomal autosomal recessive due to galactosyl cerebrosidase mutation mimics peripheral neuropathy. So that's important to remember. And again, it's a slowly progressive disease look for pyramidal tract involvement in adults and periventricular and corpus callosum involvement, just like MLD. So these are the two common uh, leukodystrophies in children, and they have very similar features. Then the adult leukodystrophy number six, I'm putting three question mark because it may not be a true leukodystrophy. This patient in 30s present with migraines, and later age, they present with ischemic events and also can have cognitive dysfunction and even can have seizures. So two group of patients, as you can see, patchy changes, characteristically anterior temporal lobe changes, and even has this uh, micro hemorrhages or chronic micro bleeds on the susceptibility weighted images. But in this uh, patient, we see there is confluent white matter T2 hyperintensity, although asymmetry is there. And there is also external capsule involvement. So I'm pretty sure you have guessed the diagnosis 
this is the famous cadacel which is which is the actually the poster child or index case for monogenic small vessel diseases which is now transforming and evolving into a big laundry list cadacel caracel padmal cul4 mutation uh, fabris so many and then oh, welcome to the party there is another one the related to trax1 mutation the rcbl retic retinal vasculopathy cerebral vasculopathy with uh, cerebral leukoencephalopathy and systemic manifestation so these are um, more of these are being diagnosed so we should keep in mind monogenic cerebral small vessel diseases particularly if there is patchy changes and then uh, quickly some a few more so here we have a patient with uh, cerebellar signal changes and we have a uh, lipid and lactate peak patient present with spasticity ataxia cognitive decline cataract optic atrophy and diarrhea and there has been specific mutation identified with this disease and they have accumulation of cholesterol perhaps a cousin of cholesterol that's why they have premature atherosclerosis and if early diagnosed bile acid replacement should be given and if i give you this patient have xanthomas on the tendons so it's called cere cerebral tendinous xanthomatosis so we should remember that population then another patient with pyramidal and bulbar dysfunction young patient and also palatal myoclonus you can see bilateral somewhat symmetric brainstem changes at the level of the pons and even in another patient uh, cerebral medullary medullary uh, cervical medullary junction there is atrophy so there is brainstem involvement and here i'm talking about alexander disease due to gfa due mutation although it's quite rare so we should keep in mind and because it has been even described up to eight decade then another patient actually this is another one like the one we saw adult lipodystrophy with spheroid that this is specific for adult population and you can see brainstem changes, bilateral diffuse corticospinal tract changes here, posterior internal capsule, bilateral periventricular changes. Here I'm talking about an autosomal dominant adult leukodystrophy due to a specific gene mutation. And, and they can actually mimic multiple sclerosis and report in the literature. And this is one of here we have non specific feature, confluent, symmetric, even brainstem changes. And and even long track T2 hyperintense signal change in the dorsal column, and we have uh, lactate lipid peaks. So, this is a kind of a relative recent entity. This is LBSL leukoencephalopathy with brainstem and spinal cord involvement, also called uh, DARS2 leukodystrophy or mutation. Then, we covered most of the leukodystrophies, we had a, a kind of a full discussion on them. Now let's uh, talk about quickly about diagnostic approach, which I alluded to before too, that clinical imaging differential diagnosis and biochemical testing will let, uh, let you lead you to have a candidate or single gene testing, which would mo in most cases result in diagnosis of canonical lipodystrophies. But if it doesn't work, then we can go ahead and have panel sequencing, whole exome and whole genome sequencing with significant improvement of success rate and brain biopsy has said is should be the last re resort in certain conditions so in summary what i can say that adult onset le genetic leukodystrophy are rare about 20 of them well established now but they can cause misdiagnosis or itself it can be a misdiagnosis and definition of leukodystrophy is usually diluted Mostly these are demyelinating disorders compared to hypomyelinating disorder, which are less common. And clinical MR patterns can be very helpful, which can direct further testing and candidate gene testing. Spasticity, dementia, psychiatric symptom, think about adult leukodystrophy. Confluent symmetric pattern of MRI, think about adult leukodystrophy. There is increasing success in diagnosis due to next generation sequencing. And as we all know, unfortunately, there is no effective care for most of them. So thank you for your kind attention. But before we go, one more for the road. And here we go from the literature. We have kind of long extensive transverse myelitis kind of pattern, diffuse spinal cord chiasm signal change, bilateral optic nerve enhancement kind of 
uh, myelitis and optic neuritis pattern, but this actually was Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, one of the leukodystrophy mitochondria, uh, considered as a leukodystrophy, but it's a mitochondrial disorder. Thank you very much. I hope you stayed focused and enjoyed because this was a fairly heavy kind of topic and discussion.